What's up, City Sports Network? I'm back here with a very, very special guest from the Duke City Gladiators, Mr. Ernesto Lacayo. Ernesto, how are you doing today, man? Doing great. Uh, doing great. Thanks for having me on here and pretty exciting. So. Yeah, no problem. So getting right into it, this season, you know, you personally, you made eight field goals. Um, you made most of your extra points. How do you feel this season went overall? Overall, a lot better, you know, doing a lot with the team as well as getting the green lights to do things like the deuces, field goal attempts. And uh, it's always exciting when you're giving the green light to do something and be transcendent about a new rule. So it was very fun. I mean, I had a really good time enjoying this year and look forward to what can the future hold as far as perfecting my craft and, you know, keep uh, Duke City in the categories where they can get in the top of its level. Now, one of the questions I have, and I've got a lot, is it's Duke City's field of full 50 yards. Uh, well, it's a full 50 yards with the Anselms being an eight yards. So it's like uh, what really helps in Duke City is the elevation. So uh, pretty much you can kick from one side of the arena to the other. Uh, that being said, it's one of the more, uh, at the Rio Rancho, it's one of the more uh, forgiving for kickers because there's not much in the way. You do have some speakers towards the end, but given that, it's one of the places you can let your leg loose and at the same time, you can flourish there. So it's one of my favorite arenas that I've been in and played at throughout my career. So I felt playoffs yes, yesterday. Some very, very exciting games. What games were you watching last night? Well, believe it or not, I wasn't watching any of the games. But for some reason, I felt, you know what, let me tune into the Arizona Rattlers game. Uh, just simply because one of my friends is one of the kickers there for Northern Arizona, Connor Mangan. And uh, I was very shocked to see what was happening. Um, but, you know, being part of the Rattlers before, you know they're going to adjust. You know they're going to give it a good competitive game. Um, but what came down to is just simply the football god saying, uh, you know what, we're going to take this another way. And is what happened. So one of the big announcements this week is that the AFL is coming back with 16 teams. What was your reaction to that news? I was not excited. I've been in the AFL many times. You know, the one thing I've always respected about the Indoor Football League, for 15 years, they've held their own. They've never faltered in anything that they've done. With the AFL, I mean, I've been around twice, and twice it has folded. Um, yeah, it's an exciting game. The pace sometimes are a little bit better. Uh, the kicking game was a little bit different with the kickoff rule. Uh, but, you know, when it comes to the skill set of the, of the place kicker, I think the AFL has always been better because – in the AFL, you're pretty much one-dimensional, mostly extra points, rare field goals because of the netting. And then on kickoffs, you mostly uh, just try to kick off the net and see what happens, whereas in the indoor football league, with the deuce rule or letting it bounce off the, the uprights, you know, you can create more opportunities and more uh, dynamics of the game when it comes to touchdowns and stuff like that. For sure. So you're someone that's been in this business for a while. You know, we talked a little bit off camera about football and the business. Do you think more indoor guys deserve opportunities outdoors? Absolutely. I mean, we have a lot of small examples. We know the biggest one being Kurt Warner back in the day. Um, but in the, you know, the kicking position, people don't realize that some of the NFL kickers had their starts in the arena football leagues and flourished. Uh, that being said, when I was in 2020 in the XFL, you know, I was serving as an ambassador for the arena football league uh, slash indoor and, you know, the question that was always asking me, Ken, is there a lot of good players? I'm like, unfortunately, they get overlooked at. But there's a lot of great athletes there. And there is an adjustment. You know, a lot of guys are pros about it. They work just as much indoor and outdoor to get ready for any opportunity. I think the misconception is always in because of the fact that it's a small field, it's indoor. They don't have that caliber. And, and unfortunately, uh, a lot of guys have lost opportunities. But in reality... You know, a lot of these guys can play. The game is a lot slower when you go outside and vice versa from the outdoor game to the indoor game. It's a lot faster. So it's a matter of being a pro and adjusting. And, of course, there's a ton of guys. I can name at least 50 guys in this league all over that can play in the next level. Who are some guys that you personally enjoy watching? And not being biased in my position, but guys I like watching. Jared Harrington played with them, played against them. Uh, Drew Powell is always very dynamic. Uh, you have a Daquan Neal, Isaiah Houston, Braxton, Haley, um, you know, a Troy Evans, who I played against in high school. 
and then played against with him this year and then played uh Devontae Sam Lynch is another good guy uh, uh the running back for the Bay Area what is his name uh Justin Rankin Rankins that guy <laughs> You know, if I saw Rankins uh, coming at me at full speed, I would have to make a business decision uh, and try to make a tackle here and there. Uh, a guy from Tucson, also the, the running back from Tucson is very good. Some of these names are just not popping right now. Um, but there's a lot of these players that I like watching, even if you're a veteran. They're younger guys, and they have bright futures. As long as they stay healthy, continuously adjust to the game, and then get better each and every year. I mean, it's, it's exciting to see where these guys are going to go. And I just hope they get that opportunity, whether the NFL, USFL, XFL, CFL, and whatnot. Definitely. I, I hope so, too. You know, I, I personally think the talent in this league is could be a little better than the talent in USFL, you know, because I, I, we got we got a lot of great players here. But um, kind of transitioning to your personal career, um, take me back to your high school days. Well, I grew up in the Hayward, California, went to tennis in high school, home of the Lancers and everything. And, you know, they was football was an accident. It was more of a I was a soccer player, baseball player and did martial arts. And then one time I got a uh, fractured left ankle and, uh, you know, I was very limited to what I could do. But I always had a strong leg and uh, tried out for the freshman football team, made the team. And I remember my first uh, hit I ever took. I kind of fell in love with the sport. But kicking wise, you know, I was unaware of where it would take me and I remember I had one of my coaches good friends Nick Cruz who you know told me you know you keep your grades and you perform well and you stay at the level you're at you can get a scholarship so I, that was something for me at the time I was never thinking so I took it upon myself to make sure I was in the top of the state in my as a kicker at the same time keeping my grades and being able to be open to what's going to happen next where I thought it would take me, I could never have told you, you know, the truth about that because I wanted to play at college. I wanted to be the best in my high school's history. Uh, and I did that. Then I went on to Hastings College, got a full ride scholarship there, wanted to be the best in school history. And that program has been around since 1892. And uh, it was an honor to be a captain there. I never had a kicker as a captain in the school's history. And just being able to still have those records, both at my high school and in college, you know, it's, it's great. It's an honor, uh, but records are meant to be broken. So hopefully you know, the younger guys, you know, use it as a platform to beat that. And it's always great. I think it'd be great when I broke records, older guys who had those records reached out to me and, you know, it's an honor. It really is an honor like that. So records are meant to be broken. And then coming out of college uh, in 2011, the draft, I was undrafted and, didn't know where life was going to take me. So uh, at the time, there was a brand new indoor football team uh, coming out in Grand Island, the Nebraska Danger, and that was my very first team ever. You know, there's three head coaches in this league that were on my team. Dixie Wooten was our quarterback. Curtis Shin was our receiver. Mike Davis was the head coach. So there's a lot of those guys that were on the team. And, you know, I, I promised myself when I was younger, I'll probably play five years. But as time went on, I see what the impact I was having on the next generation at the same time, building my brand. So I continued to play and I wanted to make sure I was always in control of my career, whether trying to move up to the NFL and, and making an impact there. But I playing these all these years in arena football, I think it's helped out a lot, not only in my brand, but also inspiring the next generation to strive and know that there's another avenue to play in professional sports if they so choose. For sure. No, I definitely agree with that. Um, you talk about your brand. What is your brand per se? I think for me, it's, you know, when I was younger, it was hard to pick, pinpoint that, but now it's one of those where I want to inspire. And it's, I was never much of a showboat of a player. I know there's a couple guys I've known from my career who over uh, celebrate when they make kicks and hey, up to them. But for me, I always wanted to be considered a gentleman of the sport, you know, watching in soccer, watching in football. Some of these great guys, you know, I read a lot of books on Walter Payton, watching Pele as well, Maradona. And, uh, you know, you got Tom Brady, you got a lot of these guys who they carry themselves so in a gentleman-like way where they were respected, you know, even if they hit you, even if they do all these things, they were never in your face about it. They always make sure that in football, we're not trying to kill each other. We're not trying to hurt each other. If anything, 
It's about respect at the same time. You never know when you're going to play with these, some of these guys. So, you know, when you come, you know, into a new team or a new atmosphere, a guy comes in, you know, they, you want the biggest respect as far as like, hey, I know you. At the same time, look, let me help you out. Let me take you under your wing. So my brand has always been just trying to make sure I inspire the next generation and then also my peers in any way I can help them just to flourish in their careers. For sure, no, definitely, you know, you're definitely a professional and you take a lot of pride in what you do. Where does that pride come from? Did that start at a young age? You know, I never had to look far uh, further than the, the means of my house to see who my heroes were, my mom and my dad. You know, my dad being a professional soccer player in the late 70s and early 80s, and unfortunately, the Civil War in El Salvador had to deter that. Um, but watching him play, I got a chance to watch him play a little bit, you know, in the 90s but growing up. And, you know, my dad was my hero. So he always, you know, Billy, being a military background as well, and then being a professional athlete, you know, there was not a day where he wasn't hard on me and stri striving to be the best in everything I did. But at the same time, helping everybody out. Uh, even when I was a little kid, I was really good at helping kids out uh, or like my teammates just to be better. So I was never very selfish. And then my sisters, great soccer players. I mean, I can't tell you uh, watching them too. I was living in their shadows in the sport. So having to find football over time was something that I can find my own niche. But my mom being a doctor in the medical field as well, she was uh, one of the most hardest working women. She still to this day has three jobs. <laughs> just because she's always bored and like do things and keep herself busy. But, you know, going back to my youth, seeing how hard my dad and my mother worked was what really instilled to me to be the best person I can be at the same time as a professional. For sure. So I, I think that's really incredible. You know, your mom was adopted, your dad was in the military. What did they teach you about discipline? Well, one of the things that they told a lot of us, uh, my, my sisters, is that if you're going to do something, do it right or don't do it at all. They never wanted time to be wasted. We didn't grow up with video games. I mean, for me to go play video games, I had to go to my cousin's house over the weekend. But for us, it was always discipline, making sure that today you were better than you were yesterday and tomorrow even better. And that's something that they we're doing every single day. And I'm sure it wasn't easy to balance, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, three children in sports and all the time going back and forth. But at the same time, it was something that we learned as, you know, siblings and we, we understood the task at hand. So that's something that they instilled in us every single day. That's where it comes from, my drive. And to this day, I still live through that motto. And, and that's a great motto to have, you know. Discipline is really important. So how do you, what are you involved in right now in outside of football? Well, going back to the training, getting ready for the leather ball, just in case you, any opportunity that comes around. Um, but working with Luis and Dejas here in Chandler, Arizona, he has something that you don't see anymore in the kicking game where, you know, all of his lessons are free. He has a backyard with a, a, <laughs> a beautiful goalpost to kick at, but you have a lot of kids from the, you know, the elementary level to the high school level, and you get to see the development of these kids. At the same time, they get to see a professional come train with them. And I like to be the one to go always go up to them and be like, hey, what's your name? Or, hey, I see this, make this adjustment. Because it doesn't help at my age to keep all this wisdom anymore. It's more to pass on. And then you never know. Because when I was a kid, seeing my heroes – in the sports and then meeting them. I was like, I would have tell them like, Hey, you were the reason why I did such and such. So it's, it's really good to be involved in that right now. And it's, and it's free. A lot of, unfortunately the kicking game, it is uh, not a poor man sport or position anymore. It's very golf like, and uh, it's, you know, a lot of pol uh, politics in the game, but you do what you can and making sure keeping your name alive. I a hundred percent agree with you. Um, you know, it's important to give back to young kids. And yeah. It means a lot to them. Um, so, obviously, we talked a little bit about what you're involved in outside. One of your nicknames is the most interesting man in the world. So, how did that nickname come about? Well, I mean, there's many variations of that story. So, I remember in college seeing all those commercials with Dos Equis and everything. And even then... I remember guys were calling me that, but it's because of, you know, I'm very quiet when, especially when it comes to practice and games. And then, 
the guys see me or teammates see me the doing a lot of things. They're just like, well, he can do that. I'm a big car guy. I'm a big reader. Uh, um, you know, I used to do, uh, my minor was in acting. Uh, I was a history major. So I'm a, all these little <laughs> traits that I have, but uh, this year I, I, you know, I have to give a lot of credit to our announcer, uh, Sebastian, because uh, he's the one that came up with it and it just stuck. And, and uh, it, it became a pretty funny thing. Uh, and a good niche and everything. I, I always tell the young guys coming into their first year or second years, you have to win the fans. You have to win the fans. It's our profession. The arena game is kind of like the, the WWE where you have to build a character that they can grab on. And, you know, at the same time, it may change over the years. I mean, I used to come out of sombrero uh, and used to toss that in Wichita, Kansas and in Vegas. And they loved it. Now wasn't, is it something that I enjoy? No, but you play to your crowd at the same time. And so this year, it, you know, I had a little bit of fun with that most interesting uh, man uh, uh, niche or character because uh, I, I love those commercials. And I was able to at least, uh, you know, give Sebastian or the fans something to look forward to throughout the games because a lot of people were telling me every time I came up to kick, they're like, what are they going to say next? And so... Uh, I'm not sure how much more they got to use on them unless they start going to the Chuck Norris joke. So we'll see what happens. But it's been fun and, and entertaining this year with that. Definitely. that it's, it's awesome to have that nickname. It must be so cool. So um, we talked a little bit about how you're with Duke City. What makes Duke City, uh, in my opinion, Duke City one of the best run organizations in the league. What makes them have that? The biggest thing is they're, they are the community champions. They're very good and very involved in the community. And everywhere we went in Albuquerque to Rio Rancho, Bernalillo, everywhere I went, even when I went to go visit Santa Fe, people know who the Duke City Gladiators are and what they bring to the table as far as the community. That being said, you know, what makes it so special there is the family environment. You know, it starts at the top. Gina and her husband, Scott, they're very involved. They're very involved in, in making us feel um, as professional athletes and taking care of us. And you don't necessarily get that. I've never in my whole career seen an owner involved as much as Gina has been. Um, and that's great because there's always a disconnect. You may see the owner in, in, a, in a different organization that just shows up randomly and you don't know how to treat them. You don't know what their relationship is going to be with you. And that's something that really attracted me when I came to Duke City was that not only was she involved, but knew how to communicate with the, uh, with the community and being involved. And a lot of the guys who have never really broken out of their bubbles in their careers, it gives them an opportunity to be with fans, to go with kids or to go anywhere in the community to be able to not build their brand, but also create the relationship that they need to really flourish in their careers. That's a great point, and that's really important for an owner to do. Um, so last couple of questions here for you. Personally, what's your next step in your football journey, and how many more years do you think you have in the tank? Wow. Um, I probably would have – every year I always give myself a number of how many more years. Um, every time I say that, it seems to keep going longer and longer. I'm going to be entering my 13th year as a professional. I'd like to be able to tie – or surpass to me the greatest kicker in arena football history, which is Mark Lewis, um, 16 years. That's incredible. And now I don't know if anyone's going to catch up to his points, um, but to be able to get to that mark would be great to be amongst that elite. Uh, one of my favorite kickers, Parker Douglas, is getting um, inducted into the Arena Football Hall of Fame this year, Indoor Football Hall of Fame. And, you know, he I already surpassed him in years, but the impact he made in the game, wow, it's going to be amazing. Well, what's next for me? Get ready for the next season. At the same time right now, I'm getting ready with the leather ball, just in case the NFL calls. This is about the time where they start bringing in guys for workouts or XFL, hopefully getting an opportunity there again. Uh, that being said, you know, there's a lot of things that we can always work on every single year to get better and beat the elite in our game. So looking forward to coming back to Duke City, being back with the fans. I think the fans have welcomed me extremely well in Duke City and you know gives a new avenue and stuff like that and things that i can provide continuously be the deuce king at the same time now adding a new element to the game and the drop kicks and so just bringing all that and being ready to be a, new, a leader again and hopefully welcome the new generation the next wave of guys coming into duke city and uh, making theirs 
you know, they're the experience the best that it can be. Can we expect you to job pick a lot next season? Well, we were supposed to do it this last game. We didn't pull the trigger. We actually practiced it. Um, before the season, I was working on it because I know how to do it. At the same time, it's fun to do, and I always wanted to, you know, break that mold. But now that you start seeing how the impact is, it's a risk-reward uh, opportunity because it's not easy because of the ball. It's composite. You don't know how that's going to bounce. Now, if it was a leather ball, why not attempt every single time? Uh, but it's something to add to the tool bag that you can now. And so I expect to at least try a lot more next year. And also uh, not only in, in just after a touchdown, but maybe on a fourth down where four points. So it's a risk reward. Just got to make sure, you know, you got to feel the game, see where it's going to be beneficial. But attempting drop kicks and then go with deduce or field goals with deduce, it's a, been a big, a big change for this game. And I think it's going to be a bright future for the kicking game. For sure. So – and that's still my last question for you today is what's your biggest piece of advice for younger people? My biggest piece of advice for the younger people, you know, I, I love the motivational speaker, Les Brown. I listen to him all the time. And one of the things I learned from him is that what's beneficial is that there are three words, being patient, being persistent, and being positive in everything you do. Because you can't control everything. And so you got to control what we, you can control at the same time. Learn that it's going to be an experience, that it's there for you, and it's meant for that to be happening so you can learn. I mean, I can tell you more about my misses than my makes throughout my career because those are the things that, you know, it has to bother you. Things have to bother you. It can't always be, you know, sunshine and rainbows. Things have to bother you in order to make that adjustment and grow. So being patient, being persistent, and being positive is one of the biggest things I can recommend to everybody. That's great advice. And that's why I want to thank you so much. You know, I watched you for a while now, so really excited to have you on the show today. Um, you know, I wish you the best of luck. I know you're going to do great things, continue to inspire the community, and I will see you real soon here. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me again, and, you know, good luck, and then hopefully I'll talk to you soon again. Yes, sir. I'm a game changer. I'm a game changer.